Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to State Leave on Manor, where Roger and I have returned for my weekend reading report. It's time for my weekend reading report, something I haven't done for a couple weeks. But here we are, Roger, to talk about all the stuff I read last week and the week before that. And it isn't much. Because this month, August, has not gone the way I had planned. It has been, well, there have been some unexpected developments and extra stuff going on this month. So my reading time has been squeezed to a fraction of where it usually is. You know, there's been days when I've only had like literally 20 minutes free time. So, you know, I read every day, but sometimes it's not much. But I read a couple things, so let's talk about those things that I read. I have my list here for the 500 book challenge, the challenge where I have to read 500 books that I own before I will buy any new ones. And where did we leave off? Okay, we, we left off two weeks ago with uh, 100, number 168, which was the Fantastic Four, the world's greatest comic magazine epic collection. So that's where we left off. So book number 169, book 169 that I read specifically for uh, the last epic comic book Wednesday is this book. It's Black Mark by Gil Kane. Black Mark by Gil Kane, one of the earliest graphic novels. Yes, this is actually a graphic novel in mass market paperback size. So it was kind of revolutionary and didn't sell, unfortunately. This was supposed to be a series of books, but as far as the paperbacks are concerned, only one was published. I talk all about it. In my last exciting episode of Epic Comic Book Wednesday, so I will link that down below. If you're interested in Gil Kane's Black Mark, and you should, because Gil Kane is awesome. He's one of the greatest comic book artists of all time. And this is certainly interesting. Black Mark, science fiction, fantasy type of thing. It's like a sword and sorcery story in the future. Post-apocalyptic wasteland and mutated monsters and... All that kind of stuff, you know? It's fun. Black Mark. So, yeah, I read this. I read that. That was book 169. Book 170 is this book. It's another Fantastic Four epic collection because I am reading every issue of Fantastic Four from the first run of the Fantastic Four, which ran from 1961 until 1996. So it, it ran a good long time, and I'm reading every single issue of that first volume of Fantastic Four. And I just read issues 19 through 32 and the first two Fantastic Four annuals, which are included in this Fantastic Four Epic Collection Volume 2, The Master Plan of Doctor Doom. It's The Master Plan of Doctor Doom, but you wouldn't know it because Submariner's on the cover. For some reason. Doctor Doom doesn't even make it to the back. He doesn't he doesn't even make it on the back cover. But Doctor Doom is in here. Because, you know, it was his master plan after all. He's in here somewhere, right? Yeah, Doctor Doom is in here. And Doctor Doom is great. In fact, this is the final victory of Doctor Doom from the second Doctor Doom uh story in the Doctor Doom origin issue of Fantastic Four Annual Number 2. So there's Doctor Doom. And I will be doing an Epic Comic Book Wednesday about this very story in the very near future. This was fantastic. Love the Fantastic Four. Really enjoyed these issues. So yeah, this was wonderful. It took... I, I did manage to read Fantastic Four every day. I did manage to do that the last couple weeks. Because, you know... I got to get through a lot of Fantastic Four. And this was just fantastic, appropriately enough. So I read that. That was book 170. And I have moved on to the third Fantastic Four epic collection, 
the coming of Galactus. The coming of Galactus. So this is when the Fantastic Four starts getting really good. I mean, it was good already, but it starts getting really good right about here. The coming of Galactus. The third epic collection, which collects these early stories of the Fantastic Four. The stories in here are from 1964 through 1966. So moving right along with the Fantastic Four. Next, I read book 171 on the challenge. And that was Shadow of the Smoking Mountain by Howard Andrew Jones. Shadow of the Smoking Mountain by Howard Andrew Jones. Book three in the Chronicles of Hanuvar. A really great sword and sorcery series. I, I'm really enjoying this series. And we're at our third book. And of course, I couldn't buy this book. I couldn't buy it. But Howard Andrew Jones kindly sent me a digital copy, the digital copy, so that I could read it. It's actually uh, going to be released in early October. I don't know if it's October 1st, but I know it's early October this book will be released. So if you're following Hannibal, Hannibar's adventures, Hannibar's adventures, if you're following his adventures, you have this to look forward to. The first two books were great as well. You should check those out if you haven't read them. And I really enjoyed this one, every bit as good, I think, as the first two volumes. In some ways, even better, in some ways. So this is a sword and sorcery series where Hanuvar, who is really a fantasy version of Hannibal, his nation was destroyed by the Durvan Empire, and the Durvans are just a fantasy version of the Romans. And... His, his nation was conquered, his people were enslaved, everybody who survived. And so what Hanovar has been doing for the past three books is trying to free all of his people, a few at a time, from slavery. And so that's what he's doing. And the way it's told is through short stories. It's like a, a collection of stories that all kind of are part of a bigger story. So very episodic adventures, which is appropriate for sword and sorcery. Really good stuff. I will talk more about this later because I'm gonna do a video just on this book, which I'll probably put out in September, probably. Wanna get it out probably close to the release date of the book. So it, you know, so if someone's searching for this book, they'll see this video and they might buy the book. And I think they should because Howard Andrew Jones is a really great writer who's, who's really, really excellent at writing this kind of stuff, sword and sorcery. I was thinking as I was reading this, how cool it would be if he wrote a straight up historical novel. That would be cool, but I'm not sure those sell particularly well anymore. Do historical novels sell that well anymore? I don't know that they do. Fantasy probably sells better. But this is great. You should, you should read this book when it comes out. It's fantastic. So that was book 171. And that's all I read. That's all I finished. That's all I finished. I've been reading one other thing. I picked this up. I picked this up. I, I got this book a while back and I was looking forward to this being published forever and then started it and set it down. But I am reading Superman once again the Silver Age Omnibus. I loved, I loved Superman in the Silver Age. So I'm starting to read the Omnibus again. And where am I at? I'm at this one. I'm at Action Comics 243, where Superman becomes, well, he becomes a lion Superman. He becomes like a lion. He's got a lion's head. You know, this is the sort of thing that happened to Superman in the 1950s. And early 60s. The Silver Age Superman, he, he ran into some interesting problems, and this is certainly one of them. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that turns out. The other thing that I'm reading right now is, appropriately enough, for Garbogist. Garbogist is going on this month, and that is the Garbology. Criminali presents Garbology. So this is edited by Troy Tradeup, the great Troy Tradeup, who has his own booktube channel, which I'll link down below along with Criminalis. 
And it's it's a fantastic it's a fantastic book that has a bunch of stories in it. Many of these stories are written by booktubers, I believe. Although many of many of the people I don't know who they are because I only know their booktube aliases and not their actual names, I think, in some cases. So I, there are a lot of people in this book. I'm like, I probably know who this person is, but I don't recognize their names. But it's an interesting book so far. I've just started it full of trashy short stories. And it's kind of awesome that this even came out. Ollie and Troy put a lot of time and effort into putting this together. And I think it's fantastic. It's just it's just great what they did putting this book together. Garbogist, of course, is the greatest booktube event that's ever happened. And so it's it's pretty fantastic that a garbology came out. I don't know if they're going to be doing a sequel anytime soon, but maybe someday we'll get a garbology too. Who knows? That might happen. You never know. But this was this is this is pretty pretty great so far. I ha like I said I haven't got very far in it. But it's pretty it's a pretty good size. I think it's around 400 pages. You know, when you read things as ebooks as I'm reading this, Troy kindly sent this to me. When you're reading these as ebooks, it's hard to know how how long they are. But this is probably going to take up a lot of garbagist because the next couple weeks don't look like they're going to be any easier on me than the last couple weeks couple weeks were. We'll see. Maybe I'll luck out. But the one thing I knew I really needed to read in August was this. So I'm reading this and I'm having a lot of fun with it. And I'll tell you all about it maybe next week. If I finish it by next week, I'll tell you about it next week. If not, I'll tell you about it a little later. But so far, it's good. So far, I'm really enjoying it. Excellent stuff. So there's that. There's Garbology. I'm reading that. And I think that's everything. Yeah, I don't have much to report. It's been that it's been that kind of life lately. But that's okay. I'm not complaining because at least the stuff I have been reading has been have been real has been really good. It's been good stuff. And for those of you, I have gotten some questions about the 500 book challenge and that if somebody sends me a book like Garbology, does it count for the 500 book challenge? Why I do count them because I own them, but I did not buy them. Which seems kind of a cheat, but you know what? It's 500 books. If this was a 100 book challenge, maybe it would be different. But I'm giving myself every out I can. So yeah, I, I own them. I didn't buy them. There you go. They count. So yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say. That's all I have to say for today. Catch me tomorrow. I will be back tomorrow. There are a couple, I don't know which video I'm going to be doing tomorrow. There are a couple of them that are, that are kind of spinning around in my brain. One of them I'll get up. And yeah, so I'll see you then. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.